Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to cover part two of the Trees 101 tutorial and finish that up. What I'm going to show you today is how to put flocking or some uh, grass or turf around the base of the trees to give them a more realistic look and uh, how to finish them off and then put them in your village. Uh, I've taken the liberty off uh, camera to take these trees that we did in the tutorial part one yesterday and uh, I've trimmed them down a little bit more with a file. Uh, I've painted them brown, a, a coat of brown, just brown craft paint, and then went over them with a uh, uh, almost a dry brushing technique of green, just to get a little more of the, uh, the detail there. Again, so when something flows through or pops through on the other side, it looks more like, uh, it looks more natural than it would uh, a piece of pink styrofoam. I've done that on both. They're both shaped a little bit differently. Uh, and the way that I was able to shape those uh, yesterday after I started looking at them a little bit more was with a file. I've got uh, a few of these files out in the garage. You can get these at uh, uh, Walmart, Harbor Freight, uh, just about anywhere, I would imagine. And uh, they're pretty coarse, uh, but they work great for sanding down foam and, and things like that. So that came in real handy. Uh, and then I thought about trying one with the Dremel tool that I've got. I didn't, I've never used it on foam before, uh, or at least not on this project, but I decided to do that. I kind of like the way it turns out. It's a little thinner. Uh, you can see the, the difference there. It's a little more shaped uh, to the base of the tree. I have not painted this one. I'll do this one uh, with you guys on the tutorial, uh, but then we'll go from there. Okay, so with that, let's go over some materials that you're going to need uh, to finish this project today. The first is a couple of different things. One, you can use, you've seen this before, this is the, um, the blended turf. I again, got this at Hobby Lobby. There's a different, they make this in different colors. This is called coarse turf. I believe I got this one online. Um, it's a little bit thicker. You can see the, uh, the nodules in there, a little bit bigger foam pieces. Uh, in a red color, so you can mix and match, you can do that. Uh, and if you don't wanna buy this stuff, believe it or not, you can make it right there at home. Uh, they may look at you funny when you go into the hardware store and ask to get some of their sawdust. If you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, typically where they cut the wood, they use a vacuum cleaner attached to the saw mechanism. So when they cut the wood, uh, they turn the vacuum cleaner on and it takes all the sawdust and, and hopefully takes it into the vacuum cleaner versus all over the store. So if you can find somebody that works there, you can just simply walk up to them and say, hey, can I get some sawdust? They'll probably look at you funny. They did me, but I got a whole big Lowe's two gallon or five gallon bucket or whatever those are full of sawdust. I got some funny looks. But I brought a cup in the house today, and so this is what it looks like, right? And so we're going to color this up uh, and use it as flocking. Um, the, the, the part that I like is you get two uses out of this. Uh, once you color it and, uh, uh, and let it dry, then you take a, ski, uh, a sifting device, um, a sieve or whatever you want to call it, and then uh, put the sawdust, uh, the colored sawdust into that, and what you get is almost a real fine powder which looks just like this. The only difference is this is foam and it sticks to things a little bit easier in my opinion. Uh, this is obviously wood. And so a little bit of a difference, the foam I like a little bit better for the texture, but you certainly can use this and get away with it. The next thing that I like is some of the bigger flakes of wood don't fall easily through the sieve. And so you're stuck with those uh, as leftover. Those leftover colored pieces of sawdust look almost identical to leaves. And so those are the things that I use to sprinkle around the base of these trees. Uh, you put some either some, uh, some spray adhesive down, we've seen that before in, a, in another video, or you can simply use Elmer's glue and put a coat of that on there and then use a combination of the, the real fine uh, sawdust or the, uh, the turf uh, and then the coarser material, either the turf here or your, saw, your bigger sawdust flakes, sprinkle that on there and then let that dry. And really, that's your, that's your trees. They're done. They look, uh, I think they look really, really nice. Uh, and certainly you've seen them. I did count these last night in this village back here. There's 20 trees uh, in that village back there. I've got 15 more 
on my uh, manor row. I've got another four or five on the cemetery. I've got three or four on the peanuts house. Uh, so, I mean, trees make uh, or break your village, at least in my opinion. They certainly add to the uh, the realism, they captivate somebody who's looking at it almost right away. Uh, it brings you a sense of fall that is in the air. And so you can never have too many trees. And so I'm trying to show you an easier, uh, maybe more economical way to, to build your own and have them look just fine. So with that, let's go ahead and start painting this base. And then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to mix up that sawdust mixture. Okay, you guys have seen this paint before. This is just basic Craft Smart brown paint uh, to pick up from your local crafting store. I've got these little sponge uh, applicators that, that's almost perfect for this. So let's shake a little bit of this up. We're not going to use a whole lot. Uh, it doesn't need a whole lot. The coverage doesn't have to be uh, perfect. Uh, you're going to cover it again. And so basically, uh, this coat can go on as... Uh, thick or as thin as you want. Let me, uh, let me move this out of the, the camera there. And again, this is, I'm not painting a, a car or a house here, so just kind of go for it. You're not gonna, you're not gonna mess anything up on this. Uh, get a good, good, some good coverage on it all the way up to the, the trunk of the tree. Now there's a little bit of hot glue at the top that requires a little extra uh, probably a little extra paint to make it look right. Um, and you just go around and, and paint this until you're, you're happy with it. All right. And so then what we'll do is we will set this aside uh, and let it dry a little bit. And then uh, once that's done, uh, we'll come back and dry brush a little um, green on there. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, so that's had some time to dry. And now what I'm gonna do is uh, pretty close to a dry brush of some more Craft Smart, or, uh, the acrylic uh, craft paint. Uh, this is called dark green. Uh, it's pretty basic, right? So we'll shake a little bit of that up, just a little bit on the, uh, on the plate there. And again, the same concept, get a little bit on your brush, dab a little bit off, and then really what you're gonna do is just sort of start uh, dabbing this around in certain areas. It, uh, it goes on pretty dark at first, but then the more you kind of blend it in and around, the more it will uh, you know, dry a darker, lighter color. Uh, but you don't need much. Uh, and again, just put it on as much or as little as you want. You can paint the whole thing green if you want. If you want to skip the brown and just go straight green, you're certainly welcome to do that to have it blend in a little bit more with your grass. Um, you don't have to put bases on these trees at all. You can, if you're using, you know, especially two or, you know, thicker, uh, you know, styrofoam, you can simply, uh, forego the base and, uh, put these right down into the foam. I would suggest taking that hot wire knife and going in, into the foam a little bit to create a pathway for it. But then you can simply stick those down in there and, and not have to worry about a base at all. Uh, so there's a hundred ways to do this, but, uh, this is the way that I, uh, I like it, and uh, again, this is the first year we've used this type of base, um, and so I'm, I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. Okay, so that's really it. That's what your base of your tree is going to look like before the flocking, uh, and so now we'll set this aside and let it dry, and then I'll show you how to create the flocking. Okay, we're gonna now mix up the uh, formula for, for putting uh, color into our sawdust. I grabbed these uh, disposable uh, paint cups or whatever you wanna call them at your hardware store. You can see I've made, uh, I have made some uh, uh, sawdust mixture in this one before with the residue. Uh, and so you're gonna need a couple of paints that are going to match or at least close to your trees, right? This is, uh, again, just more craft paint, acrylic type. It's called cadmium yellow. Uh, you can see that it matches uh, the tree a little bit. I mean, it's yellow, the tree's yellow. It doesn't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And then I use pumpkin or at least an orange color to do the, the orange trees. And you can see that it, uh, they will go well with one another. 
Okay, so how do you how do you do this? What's the ratio? I, I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of a trial and error, right? So the way that I've seen this, and again, I saw this on another tutorial on YouTube. So I'd love to take credit for it, but I, I can't. I didn't. It's not my idea. It's just uh, I've used it. Uh, I've tried a couple extra things with it, and it works. So what I do is I fill, uh, I don't know, probably uh, half an inch or an inch of water. This really depends on how much of this stuff you're going to make, right? So that's that's probably good there. The, the thing is you put a, a drop or, or two of uh, a Dawn dish soap or a liquid soap to help uh, break down some of the sawdust, help the paint to uh, adhere a little bit better. I don't know how that works, but it was recommended in every other video that I saw. So I put uh, about two drops or so, two little squeezes of Dawn dish soap in this. All right, and then uh, what I'm gonna do here is take uh, my paint and you're gonna see exactly how much I put in. Probably, let's start with something like that. Okay, it's just sitting at the bottom. You're gonna need a stick of some sort. Uh, you can see, you can tell I made orange uh, the last time with this, that's okay. Uh, this is a, a dowel rod that I just cut down to be able to mix this. You're gonna need something somewhat thick uh, in order to mix this because once you start putting the sawdust in it, uh, it's gonna it, it's gonna require a little bit of uh, hefty stirring here. And then how much sawdust do you put in? Well, I'll tell you, you start with a little and then you keep adding until uh, you, you feel that the consistency is right. And, and it almost comes out dry when it's done. So then you just take your sawdust, right? And start uh, putting some in. I'm gonna put, that's probably about a quarter of the cup in there, okay? That's what it looks like. And then you just start stirring it. Now this is going to get tough to stir almost right away, okay? There's a couple of things that you can do here one, if the color is not right, you can add more color. And I've had to do that uh, a couple of times already, but this is almost like oatmeal right now. It's way too um, uh, wet. It's way too, um, uh, well, wet is the great word. It's, it's too wet to be able to use. I need more sawdust in there. That means I didn't put enough sawdust initially for the amount of water. I also don't care for the color. I can see that right now. So. What I wanna do here is simply add a little more paint. Okay, so you just a uh, little more paint, keep going, and that will yellow everything up. Okay, now I am going to need way more sawdust. So I'm gonna take quite a bit, uh, and that leaves me about a little less than a quarter in the, in the cup and you just start stirring that around. Again, you can add more color if you feel that it needs it. And this is, uh, sorry about the, the noise here, but it's a plastic cup and uh, you really gotta get in there and get this stuff uh, mixed up. That's why you need uh, sort of a, a hefty stick uh, to, to go about doing this. Okay, and so, Continue to stir. I don't know about you guys, I love the smell of sawdust. I don't know why, it's just uh, maybe it's a childhood thing or something, but it, it smells so, so good to me for some reason. So anyway, keep stirring. Again, I don't care uh, for the coloring here. So I'm gonna add a little more yellow, not much, just a little bit. Okay, almost like mustard in there. And then I'm gonna continue to stir that up. If you find out that you've got it too thick with sawdust and not enough water, well, you can add more water. I would just be very, very careful about how you go and add this. And this is coloring it up pretty nice, honestly. Uh, now this will not be ready to use today. I've got some previous from a, another bill that I'll show you, we'll use that instead. But uh, this is going to need to be dumped out into a, um, uh, a tin pan, something probably disposable is best. Uh, and then uh, we live here uh, in Arizona where it's hot. So I just, I basically take this and spread it out into a tin pan 
and then I take it outside and let it sit in the sun for the day and dry out. I guess you could do that in the oven or uh, just leave it in a, a non-damp area for a few days uh, if, it's, if it's cold where you're at or whatever, and, and that would work as well uh, because it's going to need to dry out uh, back into, uh, I mean, a, a dried out piece of wood uh, texture before it will be ready to use. Right now it's, it's clumpy uh, and it's still very moist and it's just not gonna work. The color will change as it dries out. Right now it's damp, and so the color is a little dark. Uh, not, a, not a dark yellow, but a dark uh, as in uh, just a moist, I guess, dark. Uh, uh, and so it'll lighten up a little bit to a little brighter of a yellow once it dries out, and, uh, and then we'd be able to use it. So I'm gonna stop here. This is about mixed up, uh, pretty consistent with what I would call, this would be good. We can certainly use this batch, but we can't use it again until it dries out. So I'll have to take this out, pour it in a pan and let the sun uh, dry it out for the rest of the day and perhaps all day tomorrow here uh, until it turns into, um, again, turns into uh, sawdust. Uh, you know how flaky and dry sawdust is. It's, we gotta let it dry back to that consistency. Okay, so we'll set that aside. And then what you will find is um, it's easier to grab containers, some sort of a container uh, to store this in. I've got a little bit of orange left. This is the this back to the sawdust consistency with the orange and that's with the pumpkin. This is with the cadmium yellow. This is what we're gonna use today. Uh, and so that's how it dries. It is a, it's back to, it's back to sawdust, right? Uh, and it's very uh, powdery and fine. And, and so this is going to work for your flocking. So now how, how do you do this? Let me, uh, let me get the, uh, the sieve and uh, I'll demonstrate on how to, to sift this and the pieces that you wanna use now versus the pieces that you may wanna use later. Okay, so this is the pan that I was talking about. I, I have several of these. You can get these, uh, no kidding, at the dollar store. You can buy them at your local uh, supermarket or whatever. I believe I got all these uh, these sieves, sifters at the dollar store as well. So trying to stay economical throughout all of these uh, building projects. But this is what I would pour the wet sawdust in, spread it out with my hands, set it out in the sun. Uh, I like the aluminum better because it attracts the heat. It, it holds the heat in and it helps to dry out the sawdust uh, a little more quickly. So when, when that's done and now you've got a, a bucket full of dried sawdust in whichever color you want, you simply take the sawdust, pour a little bit into this sieve. I'll just pour it all into the sieve. And then you're gonna be left with two different things. So you just shake it back and forth uh, just like this, let it go. It's going to automatically separate. You can see all the stuff falling down there is, I mean, it's like powder. That's, that's dust. And that is perfect for flocking. That is perfect for grass cover. It would be perfect for, uh, you know, covering, um, just about anything you want to cover. This is used a lot in model railroading, uh, and dioramas and things like that. So, just sift it through uh, after everything is dry. You can help it a little bit by, you know, sort of pushing some of the stuff through there. Um, get in there and get it all sifted. And then what you're gonna be left with is the thicker of the material and the thicker pieces of the material, depending on the type of uh, sawdust that you, you got from the hardware store, I've seen batches where I've got a whole bunch at one time. I've seen batches, other batches where I only have a little bit and so on and so forth. But this, that's about what I'm left with right there. That's, that's about as good as it's going to get. Okay, so what you can see in here is very fine chopped powder. Okay, so that would be good for ground covering for fall leaves or, uh, 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 you know, around the edges of your displays or, or what have you, right? And then what's left here is a little thicker material. It's a little thicker wood. To me, if you can see those, they almost look like leaves and they certainly look more like leaves than this stuff does. 
And so I take these and set them aside in a container like this. And then this is what I use to sprinkle on the tree bases to give them the look of leaves. So that's what we're gonna do now. Uh, that's how you make, and, and this works for any color, guys. I showed you yellow, but uh, the same concept, you would take orange, squeeze some orange in there. You could do the same thing with green to make grass, uh, grass colored, whatever color you want, red to, to simulate this stuff here. Uh, and the great thing about this is you can kind of mix and match some of this stuff. I already told you that the blended turf is green, but there is some very fine specks. And I know it's hard to see, but there are some fine specks in there of yellow. So if you build, uh, if you ba um, make a batch of, of green to use as, as grass, certainly wouldn't be a bad idea to sprinkle a little bit of yellow in there to simulate this blended turf, right? So, you know, your imagination is your only stopping point here. So have at it, uh, create it any way you want. But this is a very cost savings um, way to get this flocking. Uh, and by the way, when you ask for the sawdust, uh, it, it doesn't cost anything. It's free. They're going to throw it away. So they gave me a, a, uh, a big, you know, two gallon bucket or whatever it was full, completely full of sawdust. They just emptied out their vacuum cleaners into the bucket. Um, I brought it home and I've got enough sawdust to last me for the rest of my life and, and probably uh, my children's life if they decide to, to get into this hobby uh, at some point in their life. So um, cost little to nothing to make this stuff. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let's now put this onto the trees and see how it looks. Okay guys, I've got the tree here now. The paint is, is dry. There's a couple of ways you can do this. You can use, again, the white glue with the, the sponge and just kind of go all over it with the, uh, uh, with the applicator. Uh, and then honestly, I would start with the finer of the flocking around it. Uh, probably let that dry, go back over it with some additional glue and then put the thicker uh, uh, material on there. Uh, I'm gonna try today with the uh, the adhesive spray one it's very quick and simple but this is foam and this is an aerosol can and so uh, foam doesn't typically like that so I don't know how this is going to react you're seeing it as I'm doing it so it may work great it may work not so great it may start to eat the foam uh, irrespective of that I'm still going to I'm going to do this and then put some stuff on it I think it's going to work out just fine but uh, your guess is as good as mine so let's try this Okay, so with that in there, it doesn't appear to be eating it right now. So that's good. So the way I would do this is simply take some of this and just kind of throw it around as you see fit. And again, I don't want it all over there. I mean, I don't, that's, that's probably good for my liking, okay? Uh, and then uh, now if you want, and, and I would suggest that we, we get a little bit on the sides here as well. Just to make sure that it's sort of uniformed around. Okay, I'm gonna say that's good. That looks a little bit better, right? And then a couple other things you can do. One, uh, this is, uh, I would let this dry um, for a little while. Uh, and so why don't we do that? I'll stop, we'll come back uh, after this has had time to dry. Cause if I spray it now, I'm afraid it's just gonna blow everything right off of it. So let me come back to that and uh, we'll put the thicker stuff on and maybe a different color, all right? Okay guys, we're, uh, we're back. I think it's had plenty of time to dry now. So I'm going to spray a little bit more of the spray on here. And now I'm going to take some of the thicker pieces and sprinkle those on. This is my favorite part. I think it looks quite a bit like leaves. Shake a little of that excess off. Tell me what you think. Is that, uh, is that sufficient, you think? Uh, it, so I like it. I think it looks great. I think it doesn't look too bad. I'd set that down. Uh, if I wanted to uh, to try a different color, if I wanted to add a little bit of flavor, there's a couple things I could do. Uh, I could add a little bit of orange. Um, 
I wouldn't add a bunch, but maybe a little bit, just to kind of help doctor it up a little bit. So you can kind of see how that looks there. Uh, may need to spray it just a little bit more before I add any other colors. Uh, but you certainly could add a little bit of orange to this just to kind of change it up a little bit. Again, I wouldn't go crazy and add a whole bunch, but you can kind of see how that, that helps, I think. That looks pretty good. If you wanted to add some, uh, some red clump foliage, you could certainly do that. Um, but I think I'm satisfied with that. It sticks pretty good. It's not coming off. Uh, you may have to wipe the bottom a little bit, but uh, all in all, guys, that's how I build uh, the basis for the trees. At least this is how I'm building them this year. I like the foam technique. I, I think it looks better. Uh, and uh, when I come back, we'll show you a comparison side by side with a uh, a uh, Department 56 tree. Um, I know which one's going to look better already, but this is going to this is going to be pretty close, at least in my opinion. So let's take a look and compare. Okay, guys, you can see the uh, difference in trees. Here's the base that we just made. Here's the Department 56 base. Certainly a little more uh, properly shaped, I believe. But all in all not too bad. You zoom out and take a look at the trees. Both trees look fairly good. Uh, certainly I don't think it's anything to be embarrassed about and I think it would be a nice uh, addition to any village that you wanted to put these in. So hopefully hopefully that helps. Uh, you certainly can see the difference and uh, I'm pleased with how this turned out. Guys, as we wrap up part two to building the trees tutorial, hopefully this has been helpful and beneficial to you and will take your village to that next level. That's what I'm striving for on this channel is just to share everything that I've learned over the past two or three years and, and pass that on to you. It certainly brings joy to my life. I love doing this. Uh, hopefully you can see that uh, in the videos that I'm making. Uh, if you like what you see, please click on the like button. Leave me a comment as well. Tell me, tell me what you like. Tell me what uh, I could certainly improve upon. The comments so far have been great. Uh, lots of supporting comments. Uh, it means a lot to me. It really does. Uh, I debated for a long time about doing a channel like this and finally just decided, you know, what have I got to lose? Let's do it. I'm not trying to sell anything. Just want to pass on my knowledge, uh, things that I've gained throughout the years to to everybody else who wants to do this um, and make their villages look as realistic as possible. So hopefully that helps. If you like it again, click on the like button, please subscribe uh, and I'll be making more videos. I think the next thing we're gonna do is a Pennywise uh, diorama or vignette. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna do it yet, but uh, I'm gonna start doing that one next. Uh, and then I'm also gonna start doing some reviews on uh, different buildings and accessories that I've got with both uh, Department 56 and Lemax. So you can look forward to some reviews coming up on, uh, on some of the items that, uh, that you see in the villages. So with that, take care. We'll talk to you next time.